This is Jude, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Kal Halal Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Rukwah Kadash. Double honest the apostles and elders of great millstone where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to the four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I've called this lesson a provoking title here, The Burden of Being Princes of the Power. It's quite obvious with what we see happening amongst us. In the, when we say amongst us, it's the true children of Israel. There's some people, it's obviously a burden. So we just read in the scriptures here, that there's some of these people, these men, they've crept in unawares, but it's their condemnation. They've been ordained. This is their lot. Their mouths are flapping and they're exposing themselves. Real division is taking place. There's a scripture, I think it's First Peter 4, 17, is coming out a lot because it's apt for the time we're living in. That the judgment must begin in the house of Israel. And it's happening, it's happening. It's a frightening place to be because the, the sifting, I think that's, what's that, Amos 9, 8 or 8 and 9, one of the two, which is it's actually taking place. This truth, is, it's, that it's like switching the light on when all the roaches start running all over the place. The hot climate where I live, it's a, a bane of our existence that if you don't keep spraying the, the bug sprays and what have you from time to time, you have these roaches that gets into your place and there isn't much you can do about it. But when you switch the light on, they start running around and that's what we see happening. Their roaches are on the run because the light of this truth is switched on. It's not just on the Edomites, the so-called white man, the devil in the scriptures. Oh no, it's those who have joined themselves onto them. So we have a few scriptures here that looks at this dichotomy that we find ourselves in. Because some of us is our lot to be hankering after, looking over the fence, the grass is greener. Let's, oh, if we can just do some merchandising, if we can, oh, we can muddy the waters, get the, the truth to work for us, get some money in our accounts. We want that fame, we want it now. So let's look at a few of these examples here. Let's go straight back to the scripture here. I mean, it's exhaustive. There's so many scriptures you could get, but let's just read uh, Jude 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. I think we're going to get a couple more here. Let's just go from 10. You could just read all of this, really. It just fits the time that we're in. I mean, a brother, an elderly brother, senior in the ministry, have passed on, and you've got these people who are bad-mouthing this man. It's, it's incredible to watch from here. I find myself saying that a lot recently. You scratch your head, what, what's going on? Uh, verse 10 of Jude. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, because the, the spirit has been taken from these men if they had it in the first place. In those things they corrupt themselves, warn to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kore or Kor, however you say that word. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds, they are without water, carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit were with, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch, 
the seventh from Adam prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaking great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage we might have to get back to that before we finish and just read the rest of that chapter because it fits these people with their mouths flapping it's just like what you, it's like they're taking turns one week it's this the next week is that what, what's going on here this the sifting is taking place let's have a look here at this parable Yahweh Shai is speaking. This is Luke with this parable we know very well. Let's just have a quick. The prodigal son. Where is it? 15. Luke 15. I think we're just going to read 12 to begin with. And the younger of them, we know the story, of course, said to his father, the two sons, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Let's just jump to 20. Just want to make a quick point here. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran. I always love when I read this. It's obvious the father was looking out for the return of his son and fell on his neck and kissed him. All oh, this is red letter, Yahweh is speaking. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him because he was in a state he didn't look good he didn't look like one of his sons and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet imagine the state he had spent everything he had nothing he was hungry he was famished his clothes didn't look good he wasn't wearing any shoes and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son, this is verse 24, this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. There's so many ways you could go with this, but I just wanted to bring the point here. And to stay focused on the weight of expectation, this younger son, he thought the grass was greener. I can't take the weight of this being in this house and the weight of the expectation of being a prince under my father. I just was just looking at that aspect of this story when I was just putting this lesson together and thinking the haste I want it now, this attitude. Give me what my portion is today. I want it now so I can go off and live riotously amongst the other nations. I want to be like them. This burden of being Yasharaya, which means he, prince of the power. That's who we are, the true children of the living God. His name is Yahawa, meaning he is he to be the existing one. His only begotten son who speak in this parable is Yahweh Shai, meaning he is a redeemer, savior, high priest, and mediator in the heavens. They've given us bywords, calling us all kinds of names, Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. The dispersed, the diaspora. And so he was trying to get amongst these people. It's happened over and over. It's a repeated pattern in our history. Let's get one, although we've called it the sons, but let's have a look at the daughters, sons and daughters. Let's get one here. A lesson I done some time ago, speaking about Dinah, let's just get 34, Genesis 34 and 1. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And we see what was the result of that. These were the daughters of the heathen. And she ended up being raped for her troubles. I mean, it's a harsh example to use. It says being, I'm being mean to use this as an example here. But we see what happened by this longing to be with. I, want, I just want to be like these other people. It's like the expectation in the house of the Most High. It's some people's lot amongst us to be yearning, looking out. The grass 
is greener. And just a side issue here, because we see when Jacob thought he had lost his... It says, read Genesis 37, and Jacob rent... Verse 34, he, and Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son and many, many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. So we only read about one of the daughters. And the only reason that we seem to be reading about it or why it's in the scriptures, because all these things are there for our learning, is to get the example of what happened. But it's obvious here that he had many daughters because it says, and all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted and said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son's mourning. Thus his father wept for him. So this is when he thought he had lost Joseph and they couldn't find him. So this recollection here only speaks of one daughter, Dinah. So we always say, oh, he's got just 12 sons and one daughter. But this is obviously saying here he had many daughters, but it only speaks about Dinah. And why? It's because it's telling us something. That Dinah was looking out, came out from under the protection of the father's house. She feels like it's a burden. So she's kind of looking out, looking out. And for her troubles, what happened? She went out to spend some time with the daughters of men, the heathen, and ended up being raped by one of the men amongst these daughters, you see? And then you'd have to read the rest of the story to find out what happened. Who's getting amongst these men, the heathen? There's a price. And sadly, some of us in the house of Israel are about to pay that price. Let's get back to the New Testament here. Matthew 11. I think we're going to read 6. And blessed he, blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. That's Yahweh Shai speaking, but we're on our way to verse 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Is that Son revealed in you today? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. If your soul has found rest in our power, you shouldn't be looking out, fighting and speaking against those who have been laboring for decades upon decades, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We're different to the other nations. We shouldn't be spending our time yearning and wanting to be like them. Let's just get one verse here or two. Let's see. Exodus 11, 6 and 7. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt. The modern day Egypt, that's America, Babylon, the great. Such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord, whose name is Yahweh, doth put a difference between the, the Egyptians and Israel. Whether you like it or not, you're different. Let's get second Ezra. You're Yasharala, he prince of the power. Second Ezra 16, let's start at 67. Behold, the Most High himself is the judge. Fear him, leave off from your sins, and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall the Most High lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols. Well, which was the big major one we're looking for, something offered unto idols. Is that under the skin technology spoken about the Karagma, Revelation 13 and 16. We can't wait for them to bring it. That's what's going to shut a lot of these people up. 
Because the Spirit is going to be on them to take it. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. These people are going to be on the run. Their mouths are flapping. Oh, they've all this hip hop, their mixtapes and all the rest of it. We're going to see in that day what are gone. Then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Hear ye, O my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for your power is your guide. Let's hold it there on that scripture. Excuse me, I've got a... Let's get some more in the Apocrypha. Jude, Judith, 5. Let's start from 17. You have to read all of this story here to really get all the meat out of it. And whilst they sinned not before their power, they prospered because the Most High had hated iniquity. That hated quitty, iniquity was with them. Let's read that again. And whilst they sinned not before their power, they prospered, because the Most High that hated iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their power was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by the enemies. But now are they returned to their power and are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Now, therefore, my Lord and Governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their power, let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up and we shall overcome them. But... If there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord, whose name is Yahweh, defend them and their power be for them, and we become a reproach before all the world. So we see it's clear here that the other nations, those same nations that our folk, those who are preordained, it's their lot to be looking over the fence to want to get some of their money and their goods and their fame to be well known. I've got a movie coming out. Let's set up a, a, a some kind of party. Let's all have some fun. Let's look, let's give me all of my stuff so I can go and live riotously. No, I can't wait, I can't wait. It's a burden being in the house. You see, when we're back in our right mind, the other nations, those same other nations, they know what it takes to get you away from your power. And when you're, once we're out of line, out of alignment, then they can take advantage. Where else were we going to read? Probably just going to finish up. Let's just get a Psalms here. Psalms 51. Let's go from 9. Hide thy face from my sins. We'll start eight. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O power, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. It's obviously that's what has happened with much of these people. The Holy Spirit of the Most High, Rakh HaKodesh, is taken away from these people. Restore unto me, this is verse 12, the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. 
it's taken away. And so they're waxing worse and worse, as the scriptures say. Let's go back to Jude, and let's go from 17. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord, Yahawashai, how that they told you there should be mockers, in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts? These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of the Most High, looking for the mercy of our Lord Yahawashai unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments parted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise power, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. We give all honor, glory, and praise to our power. We're not burdened with this truth. We're not offended in our Savior, whose name is Yahweh Shai. Let's close the lesson there. You've been listening to the burden of being princes of the power. Shalom until the next one.